all the people that were writing the articles and all the, the news and speculation on Stellantis reporting that the Hemi was going away, the last call, all that stuff, it's all nonsense. And uh, it's all going to really come down to who's the president. And that's going to determine, you know, whether you have a V8 or not, basically. All right, guys. So welcome back. Thank you for hanging out, spending a few moments here with me. If you're new, definitely make sure you hit that subscribe button. I really do appreciate it. Now, I've kind of taken a backseat when it came to Mopar news in the last year or two. And the reason why is because I can't stand Stellantis. I think that they're gutting and killing off the company that I've been reporting on for the last six years. And it's really painful for me uh, to watch it go down. A handful of other YouTubers are doing a great job of keeping everybody in the loop with the latest and the greatest. And since I've actually, you know, spoken to you guys last about some news, Tim Kaniskis has has uh, all but left it's really sad to see the speculation is that he told off Stellantis and and basically said that you're going down a bad road which I completely agree with and I think that uh, you know the guy that has built up the Mopar brand into what we see today which is the Hellcat the Scat Packs the SRTs that kind of stuff is watching a company that he's been helping and building go down the two Oops, you know, and it's painful to watch, really. And, uh, you know, it's really not his fault. I mean, he's been trying to put a positive spin on a lot of the EV stuff and basically resigned. Now, I don't want to beat around the bush. I'm, I'm not a political guy, but really the direction of Mopar largely determines uh, uh, with this presidential election. You know, in the one hand, you have Joe Biden, who is a very environmentally friendly or pushing the EV, worried about climate change and everything like that, versus a Donald Trump who is more about, you know, scaling back EPA regulations. You know, you can't eradicate EPA, but you can defund them and limit their power. And so, you know, the EPA just keeps strangling um, a lot of these car communities and they're being forced into a direction in the effort uh, for a, uh, you know, a climate change. This presidential election is really going to determine which direction a lot of these car companies are going to be going into. And if you rewind the tape about two years ago, you were under the impression that Stellantis was going to completely eliminate the Hemi. There was no Hemi going to be available. And, um, you know, you would have to get it in 2023 and approaching 2024. Well, we're well into 2024. And currently you can get, go get a Durango heading into 2025 uh, with a 5.7, a 392 or a Hellcat. And then you can also get a Jeep Wrangler with a 392 in there. So they're keeping the Hemi alive. And I really feel like they're keeping that on the back burner uh, with the intention of maybe changing course if there's a presidential, you know, uh, change here. And uh, you could potentially see a Hemi working its way into the new styled charger that we saw. And, and that would work out great because there is, you know, enough room in there for the Hemi with the, uh, you know, it does have a four door and it does have a, a two door option. So, you know, I can see them coming back with a charger, two door, four door, along with the Hornet and the Durango. And I think uh, they're really kind of keeping this door open because the Hornet sales have been abysmal. And they really can't, they really, I, I think they realize that they don't know the American people. They don't know the branding. They, they took over FCA. And I think their intention was to convert it to a, an American version of Alfa Romeo. They're not in touch with the, the consumer base. And right now there's a little bit of panic on their end on you know, keeping this company alive. And I think that they've stripped it down and they're, they're waiting for a permanent direction for them to go into. That's just my thought. You know, you rewind two or three years ago, I figured that the Hemi was going to be going away and you wouldn't be able to get it in 2024 because that's what all the reports were saying and that they were working on a new Hemi. You know, I just didn't think that after 2024, you would be able to get your hands on what we, what we had. And I was wrong. And all the people that were writing the articles and all the, the news and speculation on Stellantis reporting that the Hemi was going away, the last call, all that stuff, it's all nonsense. And uh, it's all going to really come down to who's the president. And that's going to determine, 
you know, whether you have a V8 or not, basically. Well, it is uh, highly discouraging news for Motown tonight after last week's Stellantis investor meeting. CEO Carlos Tavares promised a massive cost-cutting effort. And it's looking as though it will mean considerable job loss for Metro Detroit, particularly at the Auburn Hills office tower. And that's where we find our business editor, Rob Maloney. Rod, uh, not good news at all for the employment picture around here. No, Devin. In fact, I've been getting rumblings that there could be some hefty layoffs here in Auburn Hills. And Carlos Tavares came to town last week essentially telling everyone, and he did it deliberately coming here, that he's aiming at this building right here, a building that Lee Iacocca once told me was paid for by the profits made with the minivan. Jose, it's a, it's a great point. You when your making. CEO comes uh, to town from Europe be, saying... We have at least two plants in the U.S. that need a significant turnaround at least two and tells you he's sending European plant managers to come clean up the mess it should get your attention but then he talks about what he calls an EV first strategy and cost cutting to compete globally with Chinese automakers by the way when we compare to Leap Motor those 30 percent cost competitive edge I'm always talking about yes you did hear that right he's looking to cut 30 percent of Stellantis costs. Auto analyst John McElroy says. Well, he's going after the company with an ax right now to get cost out. Which will no doubt send a massive shockwave through the industry. I think that the old Chrysler Group, as we've known it in Auburn Hills, is going to be a mere shadow of itself in just a couple of years. And John says the job loss is likely to be significant. But they're going to take a lot. A lot. We're talking thousands of people. The old Chrysler Group makes the most money for Stellantis, but also is the biggest cost and set of problems, which means outsourced engineering to low-cost countries like Turkey and Morocco is on the table, which means the old headquarters building is likely headed the way of the Rensen. The tower almost undoubtedly will be up for sale. Stellantis doesn't need all that office space anymore. Now, I did call Stellantis Media Relations today. The building was closed for the holiday. They didn't have anybody who could respond to this. But again, I'm hearing rumblings of some big layoffs that could be coming as early as July. In the meantime, I asked John, I said, look, I said, what does this mean for the domestic three? He says, oh, you mean Ford, GM, and Tesla? He said, Stellantis is no longer an American company. It is a foreign company. Reporting live, Rod Malone. Wow. Take those words to heart. All right, Rod.